These are the sneaker releases that you need to know about in 2023. This is Sitter Cell. But first, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. I gotta be honest, the first time I heard of a VPN was through a YouTube ad like this one. And until I signed up for NordVPN back in like 2019, I didn't realize how great of a service a VPN actually is, specifically NordVPN. More and more of what we do in our everyday life is taking place online. In fact, right now, my entire background is all completely virtual. This never existed. It's not true, it's, it's a green screen. Um, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how much of our lives is online. And for me, it's like, you know, 90% of it. So having good online protection is one of the most important things you can do. And NordVPN is the service that I personally use to protect my internet connection and my online privacy. And I know I was making a joke before about my entire life being online, but realistically, my entire job is all online. And for more and more people, that's becoming the case. I mean, whether you work from home, whether you're an influencer, or whether you just buy and sell things online, all of your information is vulnerable to be taken from you. With NordVPN, your data is protected by next generation encryption. Not only that, they don't store any of your data and they don't track any of what you do online. NordVPN is an incredibly easy service to use and you can get online protection with one click. They have 5,500 plus servers in 60 different countries so no matter where you are in the world you can connect to a server close by so your internet is fast and secure. So if you want to check out NordVPN for yourself and protect yourself online and check out some of the other awesome features that I talked about make sure to click the link in the top of the description below nordvpn.com slash Seth Fowler and get four bonus months when you sign up for a two-year plan. I'm done with this for now. So. Back. Starting things off on October 3rd, we've got two different colorways of the women's Nike Air Force One Wild. So this shoe, I guess, is a new interpretation of the Nike Air Force One Low. Rather than being sort of a street style basketball shoe, this is more of a hiking wilderness sneaker. Which sure, I mean, is exactly what I've wanted from my Air Force Ones for the last couple years. I don't know why they do it, but this is another iteration of that, a hiking version of the Air Force One Low. This time around, it comes in two different colorways, wheat gold and in black. And I mean, to be honest with you, it's fine. It looks all right. It comes only in women's sizing and it's $145. Do I think it's gonna sell out? No, not in either colorway. Also dropping on the third is the Converse Dark Shadow Turbo Weapon. So this is yet another collaboration between Converse and the brand Dark Shadow, and this time around Rick Owens takes the classic Converse weapon silhouette and exaggerates it in a way to make it look more like a, a fashion boot, and they renamed it the Turbo Weapon. I guess because it's the turbo version of the regular weapon. Maybe it's more powerful, I don't know. I don't know. The shoe is fine. It comes in black and cream. The entire upper of the shoe comes in this really nice supple looking leather. The shoe does cost more than a standard Converse because it comes in at a retail price of $200, which is a lot. But at the end of the day, this is more of a designer shoe than a standard pair of Converse's. And in my opinion, unless this shoe is incredibly limited, which honestly wouldn't surprise me, I don't think this shoe is going to sell out. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Finally, rounding off October 3rd, we've got the Nike Air Max 1 Pure Platinum. This is kind of your standard Nike Air Max 1. It features a black mesh upper accented and I guess overlaid by gray nubuck or suede. It's not the best material in the world, but it's decent. And the overall look of the shoe is rounded off by red hits on the eyelets of the sneaker and on the air bubble, or I guess in the air bubble. It's not bad. Apparently this colorway is inspired by a colorway from 2004, which honestly I'm not familiar with, but it's a clean looking pair of Nike Air Max 1s. I just don't think they're gonna be that hype. And for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Moving on to October 6th, we start things off with the Puma MB3 La France. This is one of the very first MB03 colorways to officially hit the market. Obviously, we had that first colorway that was very limited. Now we're getting the second colorway. And La France is actually Mellow Ball's own brand that he started about a month after he signed with Puma. It's actually pretty crazy. He's got his own sneaker and he's got his own collab on his own sneaker, which is kind of cool. This Puma MB3 features a tonal green makeup with sort of floral or I guess filigree details printed on the upper of the shoe. And without actually playing in the Puma MB3 myself, I've got I gotta say that the last two Puma MB sneakers have been pretty decent on-court performers, so I have high expectations for this silhouette. But the question is, will this shoe end up selling out, and will you have a hard time going to the store and picking up a pair for yourself? Honestly, I think that there is a chance that it might sell out, because one, it's sort of a, a triple collab in a way. Two, it's the second colorway of one of his more popular silhouettes, the MB3, and it was very difficult to grab the first colorway of the shoe, so I do think that there is a good chance that this $125 sneaker may actually end up selling out, at least in certain sizes. I'm sure some sizes will still be available a couple days after release, but if you're one of those more common sizes, then maybe go to the store as soon as possible or enter a raffle, I'm not sure. 
On October 5th, returning for the first time since 2013, we've got the Concepts New Balance 998 C Note. So back in 2013, the inspiration behind this collaboration was the brand new United States $100 bill. And because of that, all of the colors used on the upper of the shoe were inspired by that bill. And over the last couple years, this collaboration has been one of the most coveted New Balance collaborations to drop in the last decade. And so for people like me, this is great because it gives me a chance to grab a pair of sneakers that I've wanted for a long time that I missed out on because I wasn't on the New Balance wave back in 2013. And even back then, it wasn't the easiest sneaker to get. The retail price of this C-Note pair of 998s is $220, which I do feel is a little bit higher than it should be, but at the same time, I've never held this pair in hand, so I don't know if the materials are significantly nicer than standard 998s. All that said though, it doesn't really even matter what the retail price is gonna be. This shoe will absolutely sell out and probably resell, so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. Also on the 6th, we've got two colorways of the Nike Air More Uptempo Low Ambush collab. So I didn't know this, but apparently the idea behind this collaboration is to combine classic basketball styles with the chunkiness of a skateboarding shoe. And I mean, the Nike Air More Uptempo Low in and of itself is a pretty chunky sneaker, so it actually is a pretty successful collaboration if you're looking at it through that lens. The two colorways that are dropping are the black and white colorway and the lilac and green apple colorway, and they both retail for 190 bucks. Obviously, the black and white colorway is pretty simple. It features a primarily black upper accented by white detailing around the air text. The lilac and green apple colorway is a little bit more detailed that features sort of a, a light purple or I guess lilac makeup on the upper of the shoe. The midsole is a little bit darker shade of purple and then of course the air text on the upper of the shoe comes in green apple or green. Personally if I had to grab one of these two shoes I would probably go for the black and white colorway but surprisingly looking at resale prices online right now it looks like the lilac and green apple colorway is going for a little bit more money so it might be a little bit tougher to get. I don't know if that'll be the case when it actually ends up releasing but we'll have to wait and see. Either way I do think that both of these colorways will probably end up selling out. Also dropping on the 6th, we've got the Adidas Crazy Infinity 2.5 in triple black. So a few months ago, we got the relatively popular Crazy Infinity 2.5, a shoe that was obviously based on Kobe's signature model with Adidas, but definitely had some modern, I would say, Fear of God, Jerry Lorenzo vibes to it, especially with that tan and black colorway. It seems like Jerry Lorenzo loves that color scheme, and that's probably a sneaker that he had some say on. However, for the second release of the shoe, it's coming in an entirely triple black makeup, which in my opinion does not look as clean, because in my opinion, it hides a lot of the cool details that make up the sneaker. With that being said though, I do think that there will be some people out there who maybe missed out on the first Crazy Infinity and want to try out the shoe, and because of that, I think that there might be some hype behind it, but definitely not enough to make the sneaker sell out, so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. What is that? <laughs> Yo, sorry, I actually just got a package. I think it's the uh, the Balvin 3s. I'm stoked on these. I know this is mad unprofessional, but I'm excited about these. Let me pop these open really quick, see if they are what I think that they are. If you're getting an impromptu unboxing in the middle of this video, who <laughs> is the J Balvin 3s? I paid way too much for these. I literally have not seen these in person yet. I don't know why I couldn't find a pair for a decent price, or even early. I couldn't get one, at least not on instant ship. I'm so stoked on these, I can't wait. Oh, the paper's kind of cool. Look at these. They got like the little J Balvin smiley face right there. I love the gradient on the back. That's so dope. Look at that. I wonder if this glows. It probably doesn't, but it might. Okay, with that unboxing out of the way, let's get back into the video. I really am stoked on those. I'm very excited about that release. Continuing on to October 7th, we've got the Air Jordan 6 Aqua. Obviously, the Aqua colorway of this Air Jordan 6 is inspired by the classic Aqua colorway primarily used on the Air Jordan 8. The upper of the shoe comes in a black nubuck, and the midsole of the shoe comes in a purple and a teal. And I mean, let's be real, every time that Jordan brand takes one of their iconic colorways from a very classic silhouette like the Air Jordan 8 and puts it on another classic shoe like the Air Jordan 6, it never really works. In this case, yeah, I think it's more of the same. It's not a bad looking sneaker at all, but it's just not, it's just, something seems off. But I mean, at the end of the day, if you like the shoe, what does it matter? Grab the shoe if you want, it's $200. It's not crazy expensive, but it's also not cheap. It may hit the outlet, I'm not totally sure, but I do think that this shoe will probably be easier to get, so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Also dropping on October 7th, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 2 Low Chicago Twist. So based on the name, I'm assuming that this is some sort of variation on the Chicago colorway, and looking at it, you can sort of get that idea. The midsole of the sneaker comes in this like aged cream color, a majority of the front half of the sneaker comes in a white leather, and then getting to the back half of the sneaker, we get to the most Chicago-y part of the shoe with some black panels and some red accents. I know Jordan Brand wants the Air Jordan 2 to pop, I get it, but when they release colorways like this over and over and over again, it just doesn't do it. Like, you gotta release OG colorways, which to be fair, still didn't do that well, but better than this, or uh, release collaborations. And while some of the collaborations like the Off-White collab and the J Balvin's did well initially, they're just not hitting the same way as they used to. So because of that, I definitely don't think that some random GR Air Jordan 2 colorway is going to do that well, and so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. 
Next up on the 10th, we've got the Nike Footscape Woven in Black and Smoke Gray. So as you guys can see, this shoe features a woven detail that wraps all the way around the upper of the shoe. Apparently this detail is there to help the upper of the shoe move, I guess, more fluidly with your foot which I guess whenever the shoe first came out was like a big deal. Uh, nowadays though, I mean, entire uppers of shoes are knit. And I don't think that the look of this shoe justifies a retro. I'm sure there are people out there who do like this shoe, but I'm not one of those people. And to top it all off, this particular colorway comes with a horsehair upper. Obviously it's synthetic, but still, why would you, why would you want that on this shoe? And I'd certainly not pay $160 for this sneaker. But again, that's just me. If you like this shoe, no shame, no shade. Just not for me. And my guess is, is that most people share my opinions on this shoe. If you don't, let me know in the comment section down below. Also hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. But uh, for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Moving on to October 11th, we've got the Nike Terminator Low in University Blue. Nike is giving us a bunch of Terminators this year, which is not a bad thing whatsoever. The Terminator is a really nice silhouette, one that I like a lot, I just don't own any pairs of because I don't feel like spending the $120 on buying a pair for myself, at least a pair of Lows. I will say though that this University Blue or UNC Blue colorway is very, very clean. I think that the white leather upper accented by those hits of that really light baby blue look awesome. But it's not enough, again, for me to spend $120, and I feel like a lot of people out there are not that hype on the Terminator Low. The first colorway of the shoe, I think, may have sold out, but probably didn't. Actually, I don't know if any of the Terminator colorways have sold out. That being said, if you like the shoe, that's actually a good thing, because you should have a pretty easy time grabbing it, and this shoe, in my opinion, is probably gonna end up sitting on shelves for a while. On October 13th, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Low OG White University Red. This shoe is a super clean, very classic looking Air Jordan 1 Low. It features a white leather upper and University Red accents on the Nike swoosh, on the sock liner of the shoe, and on the outsole of the sneaker. And while Air Jordan 1 high hype is down for sure, the Air Jordan 1 Low is still keeping its head above water a little bit when it comes to hype. That said, I don't think this is going to be an incredibly popular colorway, but for 140 bucks, you can pick up worse sneakers. I do think there are a lot of people out there who want to pick up clean colorways of Air Jordan 1 lows right now, so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. I don't think it'll sell out immediately, but it should sell out relatively quickly. Also dropping on the 13th, it's the highly anticipated Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 low golf. As a newer golfer, I think the only advantage I have over other people is my sneakers. And not even from a performance aspect, just purely a hype aspect and a, oh, look, look what he's wearing aspect, and maybe it distracts him when they hit. I actually hit a guy with a golf ball last week. I literally wish I was joking, but I'm not. All that being said, I would like to grab this pair of Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low Golfs for retail preferably because I think that it would look cool on the, on the golf course. That's the only reason. I mean, that's the only reason anyone wants to buy these sneakers anyways, to look cool, right? That's, that's the whole idea. Annoyingly though, this colorway is very clean. You've got an olive nubuck upper accented by white tumbled leather and of course a black backwards Nike swoosh. And because this colorway is so clean, it's gonna be very difficult to get. Even people who don't care about golf, especially with these Air Jordan 1 low golfs, because they do have a different traction pattern for the golf course, but you can still wear these off the golf course, so it can still be very easily a lifestyle sneaker. I don't know, I just, I think it's gonna be difficult to grab this shoe. I don't think it's gonna resell for the amounts that some of the other Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s have resold for, but I do think it's gonna be very popular, and uh, unfortunately, probably sell out very quickly. And I will not be able to grab a pair of these for retail, no matter how hard I try. But who knows, maybe Nike Sneakers app will give me the first win in months. Well, probably not. Oh, also, this shoe should retail for $170, and it's also very possible that this shoe might be the last Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 low ever. So that's another reason why the shoe will sell out instantly. So my chances just keep getting worse and worse. Moving on to October 14th, we've got the Air Jordan 1 High Gore-Tex Sky J Mop. What kind of name is Sky J Mop? Like, is that the name of a colorway? Is that the name of a color? Is that like a specific thing? I honestly couldn't tell you. In my opinion, it looks purple. So this is a, a purple, pink, and yellow Gore-Tex Air Jordan 1. It features Gore-Tex hits, so uh, it should be more weather resistant than other pairs of Air Jordan 1s. I think the color blocking, in my opinion, is a little bit too much. I think there's too many colors used in too many places, and it's not something that I think is gonna be incredibly popular. Also, the Gore-Tex Air Jordan 1s have never been incredibly popular, except for when the Jordan 1 was like, every colorway was selling for $200 for retail. Those days, aren't here anymore. They've been gone for years. So because of that, I think that there's not gonna be any hype behind this shoe. And I think it's also more expensive than a standard pair of Jordan 1s. Yes it is, it's $200. So if you wanna pay $200 for a weather resistant pair of Jordan 1s, you can. And uh, you shouldn't have too hard of a time doing it because I do think that this shoe will end up sitting on shelves. 
Also dropping on the same day is another similar sneaker, the Air Jordan 1 Sky J Mob. This shoe looks a lot like the burgundy ones it released last year, however the materials are a little bit different. You do have a white leather upper and then almost this sort of, uh, I guess, washed out purple color on, I guess it's a new buck material on the accents, I'm not exactly sure what it is. But uh, it's actually a pretty clean colorway, I just don't think there is any hype for the Air Jordan 1 High anymore if it's not like a super hyped up colorway. So for that reason, I'm gonna give this shoe a sit too, even though it's $180 and it looks better than the other one we just talked about, so I think this shoe will do better than the other one that we just talked about, however, I still don't think that'll be that great, so that's it. Moving on to October 18th, we've got the Stone Island New Balance 991. So this is obviously not the first time that Stone Island has collaborated with New Balance on a silhouette. This is, however, to my knowledge, the first time that they've collaborated on a pair of 991s. The shoe features a black suede or nubuck upper accented by this sort of dark brownish gray mesh, and then of course you've got the Stone Island logo on the tongue of the sneaker. It's a super low-key collaboration, it's very clean, it's very wearable, and obviously, because it is a Stone Island New Balance collaboration, there's going to be a lot of hype behind this collab. Plus, I hate that I have to keep saying this, but if you have not tried a pair of New Balances yet, what are you doing? I feel the same way about New Balance that I did about Boost back in 2015. If you hadn't tried it yet, you're crazy. This is one of those shoes, or I guess brands, that you really got to try. I would suggest probably the 990 line, like the 990 V6, or the 991, or 2, or 3, or any of those sneakers. Even the 2002R or 1906 are. There's so many good silhouettes out there. But really, like any of their older running focus sneakers are kind of the sweet spot when it comes to New Balance. So I definitely recommend checking those out first. Also, if you like this shoe, try and grab this shoe. You're gonna have a hard time doing it, but hey, you can try. So obviously, I'm giving this shoe a sell, and I think it'll sell out very quickly. Also dropping on the 18th is the Women's Air Jordan 1 High OG Satin Bread. So you guys may or may not have seen this, but I actually did a full review on this sneaker like two or three weeks ago, so if you guys want to check that out, there will be a link at the top of the screen. But this is one of the dopest Air Jordan 1s to drop all year. Unfortunately, it only comes in women's sizing, which means it only goes up to a size 10 and a half men's, which is honestly just a huge bummer because this shoe is super clean. It's the bread colorway, first of all, which is my favorite sneaker colorway of all time. It's my favorite silhouette of all time, the Air Jordan 1, and uh, it's just a dope all-around sneaker. Sneaker. And if you guys want to know my full thoughts on this shoe, again, please check out that review. But definitely one of the more hype Air Jordan 1s to drop this year. And I definitely think the hype behind this shoe will be insane. And so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. And I think it's going to sell out very quickly. Also, speaking of bread Jordan 1s, if you guys haven't checked out my unboxing of an OG 1985 pair of bread 1s, you gotta check that out. This is like one of the craziest videos ever. I love it. I'm so stoked on this pickup. Continuing on to October 24th, we've got the Chris Paul Air Jordan 1 Low CP3. So Chris Paul has actually been with Jordan brand since 2006, and for whatever reason, he's releasing his own, I guess, signature version of the Air Jordan 1 now in 2023. And man, let me tell you, this shoe is fire. So the upper of the shoe comes in this white material that seems like it's been pressed with a sort of filigree, or I guess, floral texture. You've got this really nice suede detail on the tongue and on the toe of the sneaker, and all around this cream and white colorway is incredibly clean. This shoe actually reminds me a lot of the Year of the Rabbit Air Jordan 1 Lowe's, a shoe that was notoriously difficult to get, was numbered, and uh, is now selling for thousands of dollars. I don't think this shoe will be as coveted as that shoe because I don't think it'll be that limited. However, it will be probably pretty limited and probably only available in certain areas and in certain stores, so I don't think it's going to be an easy shoe to grab, but I do think it's going to be easier to get than the Year of the Rabbit's. And that's because those shoes looked amazing and were also limited to like 5,000 pairs. So this one I think might release more pairs than that, but probably not a lot more pairs. I honestly have no idea. There's not a lot of information out about this shoe, even though the shoe should be dropping sometime this month. So we'll just have to wait and see whether it actually does end up dropping in October. But if it does, I can almost guarantee that this shoe will sell out and sell out very, very quickly. Moving on to the 25th, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Low 85 Neutral Gray. Now I gotta be honest, I'm a little bit confused about this release because I keep hearing conflicting reports of whether this shoe is dropping in 2024 or whether it's dropping now or even that it was supposed to drop a couple months ago. I don't know when this shoe is actually dropping. I haven't heard it confirmed anywhere. But because I've seen it on a couple news sites, I'm going to go with it. So the Air Jordan 1 Low 85 is a different version of the Air Jordan 1 Low. The upper of the shoe is cut to look exactly like the original 1985 Air Jordan 1 Lows. It's got this new molded midsole. And all around, it's more classic looking silhouette. And of course, the neutral gray colorway on the Air Jordan 1 is one of the OG colorways of the sneakers. So it's definitely a shoe that a lot of people have coveted. And last year, when they re-released the neutral gray colorway on a pair of Lows, granted not the Air Jordan 1 Low 85s, it did incredibly well. This shoe should be a little bit more limited, a little bit better quality, and just a little bit more coveted overall than last year's version, so I do think that there will be a lot of hype behind this shoe. Now unfortunately, because of the nicer materials and the newer shape, the price will raise to $170, which is not amazing, but I don't think that's going to hurt demand. I think this shoe will probably end up selling out whenever it ends up releasing, and for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. 
Releasing on October 27th, we've got the Nike Dunk Low Red Panda. This $120 Nike Dunk Low is one of the most anticipated Nike Dunk Lows of the rest of the year. The shoe features a super hairy dark brown suede upper overlaid by tan nubucks and red nubucks and overall is inspired by the Red Panda. And I know it's such a small detail, but something I really love about this shoe is the dark brown midsole. It really makes the sneaker feel different than other Nike Dunk Lows that are out there. Obviously, dark midsoles are done relatively commonly on Nike Dunk Lows, but especially when it comes to a colorway like this, it's it's nice to see something that makes it feel a bit more like a collaboration even though it's not and also makes it a little bit different than standard Nike Dunk Lows. And I definitely think the timing of this release is perfect because this is absolutely a fall winter colorway of the Nike Dunk Low. And even though Dunks haven't really been hitting the same way that they were hitting over the last couple years, I still think that this shoe will end up selling out. Oh, and actually, speaking of Nike Dunk Lows, I'm giving away two pairs of the Born and Raised Nike SB Dunk Lows on Whatnot in the next couple days. So if you guys want to check that out, there will be a link in the description below. But an incredibly awesome pair of sneakers, and you can actually have a pair for free if you're lucky. So check out the Whatnot live stream. Then moving on to October 28th, we've got the Nike Air Force One Low Halloween. So rather than Nike releasing another bone-themed Air Force One Low, this Halloween they decided to go for a black snakeskin Air Force One Low. Now I've got to be honest with you guys, this is another shoe that I'm not totally sure about the release date of yet, and that's going to be the same thing for both both of the other Halloween themed sneakers that I mentioned in today's video. It does look like these shoes could release on the 28th, but at the same time, I don't know. Nike sometimes releases their Halloween sneakers closer to Halloween and farther away from Halloween, so you never really know exactly what's gonna happen, but until Nike confirms it, we don't know for sure. That being said, I really wish Nike had stuck with their bone design, because this, this is whack. <laughs> I really don't like this faux black snakeskin overlay going on in the sneaker. You do have black leather, which is kind of standard for an Air Force One low, if you like black Air Force One lows. There is also a metal pumpkin lace lock on the sneaker, which I guess is a nice touch. I mean, I guess the sort of marbled outsole with the green and the gray is kind of cool, but it's not enough to get me to spend $145 on this pair of sneakers, so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. In the same vein, and probably releasing on the same day, we've got the Nike Dunk Mid Halloween. This is essentially the exact same design put on a Nike Dunk Mid instead of an Air Force One Low. And because the silhouette that they used is a Nike Dunk Mid versus an Air Force One, I do think that this Dunk will be a little bit more popular than the Air Force One, but not by much. I don't know, it's just not that exciting. It's kind of lazy in my opinion. That being said, I'm not a Nike designer, so I don't know all that went into the shoe. There's probably some cool features that I don't know about. They probably had a brief that they had to follow. I'm not exactly sure why it turned out like this, but it did. I shouldn't say it's bad. It's just not for me. And I don't think it's gonna be for a lot of people, so for that reason, I'm giving the shoe a sit. I also think the upper is gonna be like really stiff on this shoe because of that texture, but I could be wrong. And then the final Halloween themed sneaker supposedly dropping on the 28th is the Nike Dunk High Sweet Tooth. Now you can probably tell what the shoe is modeled after because of the name and the way that the sneaker looks, but this shoe is inspired by a candy corn. Who would have guessed? And even though this shoe is simpler than the other two shoes that we just talked about, I actually like this design a lot more because it can be worn all year round versus just Halloween and the colorway is just more exciting and it's more interesting. Now, while I don't think this Nike Dunk High will be incredibly popular, I do think it'll be the most popular of the Halloween releases. I think if they had maybe done this colorway under Nike Dunk Low instead of a high, it would have been a little bit more popular because the lows tend to be more popular than the highs. But that being said, I think it's a clean colorway. I don't mind that they did it on a high. I just don't think it's gonna be that popular. And so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. And actually, all these Halloween releases would go really well with our brand new upcoming Apothecary Halloween collection. We've got four different colorways of socks. We've got skull socks. We've got glow-in-the-dark bone socks. It's a fire collection, and it would look great with any Halloween sneaker that you have or any Halloween fit that you have. And very fittingly, that collection drops on Friday the 13th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And finally, also releasing on the 28th, we've got the Air Jordan 12 Cherry. So this colorway has not retroed since 2009, and it's one of the more popular Air Jordan 12 colorways. This shoe first debuted during Michael's championship season, and is one of the Air Jordan 12 colorways that everyone thinks of when they think of the Air Jordan 12. Obviously, like the taxis and the flu games are a little bit more popular, but this is definitely up there for a lot of people. The upper of the shoe comes in a white tumbled leather, and then of course you've got red on the mudguard, on the midsole, and on the outsole of the sneaker. It's clean, it's simple, and it's an Air Jordan 12, one of the more popular Air Jordan silhouettes. I think on nostalgia alone, even if they release a good amount of these, they will probably still do very well. I don't know if they'll sell out, but I do think that it's going to be a popular release nonetheless. And I guess because this release is closer to Christmas, there could be a lot of people out there buying this for their loved ones, so that's another plus in the sellout column. So even though I don't think this is gonna be like the most popular release of the year, I do think there is a little bit of hype behind this shoe. And so for that reason, I do think this shoe will sell out, just not incredibly quickly. 